I'll stop there for now. That's just the first part of this beautiful piece by Bergmuller. This is a composer I want you to know. He's from the 1800s, German composer who's known for his performances and compositions, but more importantly to me, he's known for his teaching. He was a piano teacher in Germany and wrote many pieces for his own students that we still use today to teach concepts and techniques in the piano world. So composer named Bergmuller, 1800s Germany, lots of good teaching pieces. My guess is that you've already run into these somewhere just by hearing them or looking through piano books or piano music. Fun fact from me is when I bought my digital piano a few years ago, um, in the song library was actually the piece I'm about to show you. So they're really common and really good pieces for piano students. And they're beautiful too. They're interesting and they're musical. So I love these pieces that fit into, you know, the teaching and learning world, but they're also enjoyable to work on and to share. So I love that. The one I'm going to show you today is the first from Opus 100. It's um, called Sincerity. You'll see it with some other titles, some French and German, you know, translations. Sincerity is the one that I'm looking at right here. And we're in C major. We're kind of setting a sweet and simple um, mood. Let me share the beginning with you and then talk about some of the challenges or practice ideas that you might want to use here. That's the first four measures. The right hand rolling legato, I think is the, the main obstacle. Maybe the, actually the, the main benefit to this piece is that you're learning it's at the same time very free and loose, but also very controlled and focused and precise. So there's kind of this balancing act of my arm is really flexible and loose. I'm using a constant motion through my hand, through my arm, but my fingertips are landing in a really clear way. Um, you know, something I like to do is actually, you've seen me do this before, but can you tap those eighth notes and listen to how it sounds? Is it perfectly even like... Can you try that just on a table somewhere or, or even if you're on a digital instrument, turn the sound off and play the keys and see if you can get that constant steady eighth note rhythm. From there, you can put it onto the sound, onto the keys. Okay, do you have the evenness? Do you have the control? Then unlock it a little bit. That's kind of the approach I would take. Get the fingers in place skips and steps, learn the pattern, learn the, the pattern of fingers, you know, the pattern of intervals, then just kind of release farther back. Are my knuckles flexible? Is my wrist flexible? Elbow, arm, posture. How free can I make that feel? And that's where you get into, you know, all the benefits of that. If I'm using free and relaxed arm technique and utilizing gravity and utilizing the momentum, I can add more nuance to my playing. I can play for hours, you know, rather than just five minutes. You, you have a lot more at your disposal if you're doing that properly. So let's look at the first four measures and how to use that. I'm feeling sort of a circular motion. So it's not just loose, you know, all over the place. I'm aligning with each note that I'm playing. So slow that way down. Pinky finger, I'm gonna be out a little from my body. And then as it comes in, I'll probably move my arm and wrist closer to my body. So that oval or circular type of motion, there's a reason. It aligns with the notes that I'm playing. So again, Check this out. Where is your arm? Is it aligned with your pinky finger? I see so many students do this. We're good, we're good, and then 
see how detached and cut off that's that's where you get into trouble the tone is bad the technique is bad it feels weird it causes pain but you know it also slows you down because from that point i've got to figure out okay now what you know how do i get over there so we're aligning we're moving here we go the right way out see where i am and then back to where I started, crossing over the thumb. Look where I am here. I even, my, my body kind of leans that way. You know, it's a small thing, but it matters. This goes back and forth. And then we're kind of staying around the same area. Let me show you the wrong way. This is what students try to do all the time. You know, it's all there, it's all correct, but it's not gonna be beautiful, it's not gonna be free and easy. It won't feel as good to play it that way. You can start there, but then I really want you to work on rolling legato from note to note. That's a way more magical, beautiful sound um, than just striking the fingers on the notes. Okay, so that's what I'm doing with right hand. Left hand, let's look at these chords for just a minute. I think this will be easy for you, but we have a C major chord, three notes, C, E, G. I want that to be played precisely with all the notes at the same time. So I'm using an up wrist, dropping into the key, good hand shape. Again, what I see from students here is your hand is kind of dead on the keys and then you try to press. <laughs> You know, let's get some motion behind that. Motion before the sound will really help you to get that in place. Change to the next chord, F major, and we go back. It's marked with a tie. We just hold into the next measure. You don't need to re-strike that. 5-7 chord, that's G7, and back home, C major. There's D7 going to G really kind of basic chords. Walk through those and make sure that each one, see where my wrist is going? That's how that works. Don't try to play it just from neutral. It's harder to do. When we put both together, the spotlight is on the beautiful right hand melody. Left hand can be pretty quiet. How did you do with those crossovers with the thumb? Can you double check one thing for me? When you cross over your thumb, can you make sure that there's space here in your hand when you go over? What I see people do wrong there is that it kind of collapses. And when you're trying to get this over the thumb, it's kind of clumsy when that happens. The thumb ends up too low and that space in your hand collapses. Can you keep that nice and round and open so that when you come over, your hand is still tall and moving easily? That, that might be a problem spot. Um, you're gonna run into more of the same as you work through this piece. There's a chance for left hand to work on rolling legato. There's a chance for right hand to work on chord playing. So we kind of get to reverse that a little bit. In the second half of the piece, you get some musical drama. A chance to practice slowing down and playing a little expressively with your dynamics and your tempo. It's a fun piece to work through. Let me jump to the end and just point out a few last things for you. As far as pedaling, you could play this piece without any pedal and just focus on your hands and your technique there. If you're ready to add some pedal, go for it. We don't want a super blendy sound, but did you notice? I am pedaling these chords just to round off the sound, kind of taper it, create a little bit of a fuller sound. If I don't use pedal, it's fine. It's just a little bit more of a flat 
flat sound. So you could experiment with pedal on the bigger chords. Um, another thing that I haven't mentioned is counting. This would be a great chance to, to work on rhythm. Again, well, I did mention eighth note rhythms, but one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Give it some thought, you know? There's a reason why music is in a certain meter with certain rhythms and rests, so don't forget about that. Um, this piece gives you a chance to enjoy legato technique, hands together playing, working in the key of C major, and you end up with a beautiful product once you've worked through it. So this is Sincerity by Bergmuller. I hope you enjoy. <laughs>